everyone. Can you hear me? Edu Express underscore org. Hi, Varsha. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Varsha. I see you've, you've said hello. Just want to make sure you can hear me. Excellent. Excellent. Hi, Gia. Thanks for joining. As you're joining, if you could tell me, you know, your, your name and where you're joining from, that would be fantastic. Today, we'll be talking about the top 10 tips on cracking the application process and profile building. So super excited to have everyone. Hi, Priya Bhatia. Hi, Shivam Lutra. Lovely to have all of you here. Hi, Nayak Naziz. Welcome to the profile building session. Jia, you're from Gujarat. Lovely. Tanya from Mumbai. Lovely to have you. Hi, Dhruv. So we're just waiting for people to join this uh, live session by Reach Ivy. Hi, Tanya. I love that you're, you've already jumped into the questions. How's Ross Business School? It's a fantastic business school. I have a number of colleagues who, who've been to the Michigan School, Ross Business School. Uh, it's definitely the top seven, um, you know, top 10 business schools. So, you know, if you have an option to join it, absolutely go for it. So today on this session, we'll be talking about the top 10 tips to build uh, your profile as you think about studying abroad and studying further. Hi, Naik. So I think we'll give it maybe another minute here, um, you know, as people are joining. But if you have any questions and if you have, um, you know, any comments, please put them down in the comments box below. I'll, I want to make sure that we keep this session very conversational and make sure that we have a dialogue here. Hi, Prathamesh. Thanks for joining. If you can also tell me where you're joining from, that would be fantastic. Hi, Gia. I think you already have another uh, question. I'm an American citizen and have a resident and a resident of India. So do I get an upper edge over other Indian applicants? That's actually a great question. Um, I do have a couple of colleagues again who've been in your situation. I, I think it definitely helps from a visa perspective. So, you know, absolutely you wouldn't have to sort of worry about, you know, having a visa right after work or even apply for a student visa. So that's super helpful if that helps. Tanya, is it better than Darden? So as someone who went to Darden myself, I, I really cannot compare if it's better or worse, but I would say both schools are great. It's, it really depends on what you're looking, looking for, right? From the experience. If you're looking for a more case study based method, um, I, I, I would and some, some schools that are really heavy on consulting, Darden is a great choice. And of course, Ross, if you're, you know, if you love the Midwest and, 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 and if you're looking for a more manuf manufacturing or te technology driven sort of experience, I would say Ross is a great bet for that. But I would say both, both schools are a fantastic choice. Hi, Varsha. Hi, Dheeraj. Thanks for joining. If you could tell me where you're joining from, that would be fantastic too. On today's session, we are talking about the top 10 tips to build your profile as you're looking to study further. I know this can be quite a, a black box and, and quite a mystery. So I'm hoping to see if we can demystify some of that. So Gia has another question. Is it necessary to give PSAT as I have my 10th going on and it is clashing with my exam dates? Uh, first of all, uh, you know, good job, Gia, on thinking about all of this so early. Tenth, uh, tenth grade is a fantastic time to start. I would say even earlier. So, thanks for for that question. I would say, you know, definitely focus on your tenth grade exams. And if you have the bandwidth to to give the PSAT, uh, you can go for it. But you can also give it in your eleventh grade. 
Hi Rakesh Shetty, thanks for joining. Hi Simply Avni, thanks for joining. Today we're talking about the top 10 tips on profile building. So I want to keep this uh, live very conversational. So I want to make sure that, you know, if there are any questions that you have, we get them answered. But what I'll do in the meantime is start sharing some, you know, top 10 tips on how to build your profile. And sorry, Tanya has one other question. One last question, sorry, Kellogg or Ross. Again, you know, tough choice and both are great schools. Kellogg, I know for a fact is, you know, is a much larger class size. So, um, you know, definitely a bigger network and it's a fantastic school for consulting and marketing. Um, you know, Ross, of course, on the other hand, is, is more uh, focused on, you know, the technology manufacturing. If, if that's something that, that you're keen on, would be a great school. But like I said, what really helped me pick between schools is talking to alums from that school or even current students because they're in the best position to give you, um, you know, a very unvarnished sort of um, viewpoint on that school. So, so I think you've named some fantastic schools and Tanya, if you have the option to, to go to all three of these, uh, you know, it's, it's none of, nothing is a bad option, right? So you're in a fantastic spot. Excellent. Hi, hi, Sesame Mean. Nice to have you on this live. So why don't we go ahead and get started about, um, you know, the top 10 tips on how to build your profile. Uh, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Archana Rao. I'm a senior counselor at Reach IV, and I'm currently doing this live from my sunny office in Atlanta. So I'm super excited to have you all. Um, you know, I, I just want to make sure that profile building shouldn't be a sort of mystery box or a daunting process for anyone who's looking to build application and 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 you know achieve their higher education dreams. So a lot of us don't really know where to start when we're starting off with profile building or applications, right, for higher studies, be it undergraduate or graduate. Uh, my hope on this session is to demystify some of that, right? And hopefully we can recognize what are some key elements for profile building and hopefully we can all start taking the first steps towards that journey, right? The very first thing we want to do is uh, start early. I cannot stress enough how important that is, right? The earlier you start in the profile building journey and the application process, the more planned you will be, the more organized you will be. Because a lot of times what happens is university applications for both undergrad and graduate programs have a plethora of requirements that you need to fulfill, right? Everything from your transcripts to the exams that you need to take and um, getting recommendation letters from your employer or your professors. There's just so much that goes into an application, right? So the sooner that you can start in the process, um, the easier it's going to be, the more organized you will be about the whole process and it'll just cause you uh, less stress, right? And, and again, applications can be a very, very stressful time for everyone. So starting early is key. The other thing uh, in terms of an advantage of starting early is making sure that, um, you know, the sooner you start, the more impact you can show in whatever you're doing, right? Doing something for a month, um, you know, say, dabbling in whatever field that you are in for a month versus a year really helps you build more impact. And that's really what universities are looking for, right? Um, in terms of seeing what, what the application process needs. So I think we have a few people joining. Um, thanks for joining this session. Sanki Lohati, Ouija Studio End, Sarah Khan, Yubi Muta. Um, and what we're doing on this session is talking about the top 10 tips to build your profile. Um, I think Gia also has another question. I wasted a year, my ninth grade, not participating in any extracurricular, so I'm stressed. I don't think I have much time to build my profile, which will get me into my dream uni, UC Berkeley. Gia, first of all, I would absolutely encourage you to forget about what happened in the past, right? Like what we haven't been able to do, let's let's sort of forget about. It. Let's look at the future. You're in your 10th grade, you, ha you still have your 11th and 12th grade. It's never too late to start, right? Um, and hopefully some of the tips on this profile building session will help you get there. Um, so I, I would encourage you to start whatever it is that you know, you're looking to build out in terms of a profile. Um, 
San loves to spam. Um, hi, thanks for joining this profile building session. So let me continue with the, the, the you know, other elements of how do you build a profile, right? The first one we spoke about was starting early, making sure that you start early. Uh, the second is really a no-brainer here, right? Building your academic profile. Uh, top universities really want to see a great and stellar record. So, you know, often students come to me saying, look, I, I wasn't able to perform in my undergrad or for, for whatever reason, right? A personal reason, a medical reason. And they feel very disheartened that my academic profile is probably not where it needs to be. And my um, you know, advice always to them is, look, the academic profile is one piece of the puzzle of the entire application that you're putting forward, right? There are a number of ways to showcase your academic rigor and your academic prowess. Um, you know, some of these are in, you know, taking the GRE, GMAT, or, or any other extra courses that you can do, like a CFA or a CA. Um, really what universities are looking to see from your academic profile is to see that you have the aptitude to be able to take on the rigor of that course, right? So a lot of these courses have um, very rigorous curriculum. So the more you can show these, pro this, these schools through taking up uh, courses um, and uh, you know making sure that you're making up for your academic profile in a holistic way, the better it'll be, the, the more demonstrable academic prowess you can show to them. Right, so, so the academic profile, building that out, the earlier you start, the better it is, right? And, and which is why getting good grades in university or high school is super important. Uh, the third thing, which you know, brings me to the third thing is uh, making sure that you're engaging in extracurriculars, right? Things outside of your curriculum. I often see students who have had a fantastic extracurricular profile in their school, in their high school and, and undergrad college, but as soon as they join the workforce, everything sort of takes a dip. Like they completely stop doing what they used to do and what they used to be really good at, right? Be this uh, playing a sport or engaging in the arts or um, you know, working working in in, a, in the community in some capacity in, in nonprofits, things like that, and it's very disheartening to see that, right? Because um, universities are really looking for a holistic profile. They're not just interested in students who are you know a a graders, but but really sort of haven't focused on building a holistic profile and and a holistic personality. Um, so I would highly encourage uh, keeping in mind that engaging in extracurriculars, making sure that you're um, doing what really brings you joy and are passionate about what you're doing is going to be very, very important, right? It really sort of um, carries you through even the tough times at work when, when you feel like you just want to blow off some steam and, you know, go play a sport or um, you're interested in, in drama and, and dramatics or, you know, uh, speaking, public speaking and maybe doing Toastmasters or, or joining, um, you know, a, a theater group. These kind of things really showcase to the school that you are absolutely a holistic uh, person and someone who who has passions and um, interests beyond just work and academics, right? So making sure that you do that uh, is, is absolutely a must. So hi, Aditi. Hi, um, Anuj. Thanks for joining. So just for your information, we are doing the top 10 tips on profile building. And we are moving on to number four, which is exploring career interests, right? So we started off with starting early, making sure you're working through starting early, building your career um, and a, an academic profile. That was number two. And then the third one was making sure you're engaging in extracurriculars that really bring you joy. Uh, the fourth one is exploring your career interests, right? And a lot of students sort of come to us um, and, and talk about how they're completely confused about what they want to do, right? And what we really encourage them to do is make sure that you're um, leveraging opportunities very early on in your career, right? In terms of um, exploring career options through internships, right? Be it when, even if you're in high school or in your undergrad, um, or even once you start working, making sure that you're um, exploring these career options is very, very important before you sort of take a plunge into doing absolutely, uh, in, into picking one or two careers, right? So. Just to give you a personal example, um, I 
always you know throughout my childhood had been told that oh, you're very quantitative you're really good at math and science so you should absolutely be an engineer and and while I went ahead and did that uh, I made sure that I took up internships during engineering um, in other aspects right so I, I did an internship um, in, in a you know in a business capacity I did an internship in a marketing capacity and that's when I realized look I'm actually very passionate about uh, the business aspect of things right which really took me to business school uh, at the end of the day um, after I joined the workforce. And so I cannot stress enough how important it is to keep exploring your career interests and it's never too late to do that, right? So um, that's really one of the important ways in which you can build out your profiles. Which brings me to the to the fifth point, which is, which is uh, you know, be a leader. And, and, I, and when I say that, I know a lot of people would think, what does that really mean, right? Like I'm, I'm an associate or an analyst at the very beginning of my career, I'm not managing a team. How do I showcase that I'm a true leader, right? Leadership positions are not just in the title. They're really about you as an individual taking an initiative, be it at work, be it in your undergrad, be it you know, even in your high school being able to show that you're someone who can take on an initiative take on the responsibility beyond just your day-to-day -day job right so so for example um you know back when i started at uh, started my work as an analyst at hsbc on top of my day job i really enjoyed taking part in corporate social responsibility uh, within hsbc right so this sort of led me to making sure that um you know you you showcase an interest beyond just your work and your core profile, right? So leadership can be shown and demonstrated in a number of ways. So I would highly encourage that you continue to do that in whatever field um, that that you've chosen, uh, be it at work, be it in your um, college, undergrad, or even in your high school, right? So you could be part of a club, even if say you're not, um, you don't have the title of the president of the club or whatever it is, showcasing that you're someone who takes on initiative, takes on a challenge and, and really sort of sees it through and you're someone that people look up to. So there's a number of ways to build that leadership. Um, hi, Word Sprinkler. Hi, Sir Cartier. Nice to have you all on the session. Just for um, context, we are doing a session on top 10 profile building tips and hi Ayushi nice to nice to have you join and we're already uh, halfway through so we've completed the top five which was you know make sure that you start early build an academic profile demonstrate that uh, you're someone who engages in extracurriculars to build an overall personality and also making sure that um, you know you're someone who's exploring your career interests and that you showcase leadership qualities which brings me to the sixth top tip of building a profile, which is really enhancing your vocabulary. Now, now this is not something that is unique to one or two fields, right? This is really something that helps you put your best foot forward wherever you're going, especially to university, especially outside of India, especially um, you know at your work, really being able to showcase yourself more eloquently, more concisely. And at Reach IV, we want to make sure that you have holistic development, right? Which is why I emphasize that enhancing your vocabulary is one of the best ways to do that, right? Uh, be it uh, dabbling in your interests of, you know, uh, reading voraciously or reading journals, listening to eloquent people, podcasts, anything that really interests you, but that constantly helps you learn a new language. And, and it doesn't just need to be English, right? A lot of students learn French or Spanish that really helps them in their, uh, in their uh, higher education journey. So I think we have a question here, Real Aditya Singhanya. I have about 90% from my ninth to 11th grade CBSE, but then I homeschooled myself. Um, I took the GED exam in my class 12th and scored 175 academically. Academically, is it good enough for the IVs and my SAT is 1500? So first of all, uh, congratulations on thinking about all this so early, um, right? And I'm guessing you're looking at an undergrad program. So 1500 is, is definitely a good SAT score. And, um, you know, I, I do see that you have a fantastic, um, you know, percentage in your 11th grade as well. My advice to you, um, Aditya, is really going to be 
you know, in addition to the academics, make sure that you're focusing on a holistic profile as you put your applications in, be it the common application or, or other places that you're applying to, right? Um, I think it really depends on what schools you're applying to. There are some uh, schools that make sure that um, you know they're looking at just the academic scores or um, or you know they're also looking at a certain cutoff but I would absolutely think about what are um, some of the key requirements right but also making sure that you have a holistic profile so Gia has a question do you have SAT preparation tips and when shall I start so Gia my answer to that is for any exam right be it a SAT or a GRE or a GMAT starting as early as you can is really going to put you ahead of the game because um, a lot of us have different ways of learning and, and different paces at which we learn, right? So the earlier you start, the better. Um, the tips that I have for SAT is, um, you know, definitely invest in a high quality program, um, you know, whatever sort of provides you SAT. And of course, if you're someone who really enjoys being in a classroom setting to study versus someone who's a more self-study um, oriented person. So I would definitely pick that, um, you know, based on whatever your preference is and really giving as many mock exams as you can, because being able to give the mock exams to see where you are and then analyzing where you are falling short and really working on those tips, I think really helps in any standardized exam. So hopefully that was helpful, Gia. We have another question from uh, Mance under score 23 so i'm looking for fall 24 intake i've graduated a few months ago is it okay to apply for fall 24 intake also with no job experience um that's a great question a lot of students ask us how important is work experience and how important is um showcasing work experience for um you know studying abroad so you know my general answer to that is it it is very valuable to have work experience when you apply to universities, right? Because uh, what universities would like to see is how job ready are you even after this course? So having some work experience, some professional experience really helps with, with that, right? So um, it also depends on what program you're looking for. If it is a, a master's program, master's of science, or you know a more research oriented program it's probably okay to apply without job experience or work experience but if you're able to, to talk about the course and about the fact um, in your applications that should be fine however if it's a more business oriented pro program like an MBA um, I, I think it's absolutely um, encouraged to have job experience and work experience, right? Because without having work experience, it's very hard to sort of immerse in the curriculum that a business school offers. Uh, having said that, a lot of students have been able to apply without any job experience, but that's because they've had some level of internships, right, uh, that they can showcase. And which brings me to Aman's question. He, you're, say, you're asking, does internship count as job experience? So that's a great question again, Aman. Uh, internships typically don't count towards full-time job experience, but they do showcase the fact that you're someone who's had professional um, experience at a workplace, right? Um, internships are a great way to showcase in your applications that you're someone who's continuously tried out different careers and uh, has had that experience um, at at work, right? But to answer your question, they do not count towards full-time work experience, right? Because internships at the end of the day are, are really something you do either in between your course or in, in, in the summer, what have you, right? So, so they do not count towards full-time experience, but they are very valuable when you're applying. Um, hi, Ashwarya. Hi, Anubhav. So Aman has another question. If I have done full-time internships, does that count? So I think what you're talking about is, um, you know, a full-time internship that you may have done during maybe your summer break, is that correct? Or maybe your winter break or a term-time internship. Um, even full-time internships typically do not count if you're not, you know, fully on, on the payroll of the company is what I believe. But if you can, um, you know, have a, you know, an experience letter or a full-time sort of work experience letter that you can get from that company, um, I think it definitely does add some value, right? Okay, so so you did it over your summer break. So, 
So then in that case, Aman, it, it will not count towards your full-time work experience. You see what I'm saying? It'll still be an internship. You should absolutely put it in your application, uh, but typically it won't count uh, you know, towards full-time work experience if it's not for an extended period of time. Uh, we have another question from uh, Manx. Will I get the question from the university of what you've been doing for a year and a half? Will I get admissions and masters, universities like USC, USAT? So I think if I get your question correctly, uh, you're asking if there was a gap in your academic profile. Uh, so you've graduated and then you're just sort of you haven't taken on a job, but you're applying to university. So typically, I would recommend not having any gap in your profile. So this does not mean that you have to do a full time job, right? So for example, if you are doing some research and it looks like you are publishing research papers and yes, research papers are absolutely important um, when you're applying for masters, right? Um, so making sure that you're doing something uh, and not just sort of having a complete gap without you know doing anything so it, be it working with a, a professor on research or maybe a phd student or publishing your own research papers and and then presenting it at um you know conferences would be a fantastic way to fill that time right by the time you're applying uh, it would be encouraged also to do some sort of a part-time internship or a remote internship uh, because that will just enhance your profile right um and and I think Aman also has another question, I, and I love that everyone's asking questions. Also publishing in college societies, does that look good? I mean, do they look at the publisher? So, so Aman, to answer your question, it is important to have published work. Um, some universities do stress that it is um, published work that is from a reputed journal, especially if you're looking at very competitive universities, uh, but having any sort of published um, work, you should put it out there, right? Uh, so so in, to answer your question, they do look at how reputed the journal is and, you know, within that field. So, so yeah, that does matter a little bit. And I know we are, we are about a couple of minutes away, so I just want to make sure that uh, we complete the last three points, which is really, you know, staying organized as you're looking through profile building and application process, uh, making sure that you're calm throughout the process, right? Because it can be very stressful, like I mentioned. Um, there's another question. I'll be preparing GRE and internship papers. Is that fine? So I think this is again to say that you're, you're worried about the gap that you'll have. So yes, preparing for GRE is fantastic. Internships will be great. I would highly recommend doing internships and the papers as well, right? So if you're saying that, look, I'm only going to prepare for GRE and show a month, a year and a half gap, that's absolutely not recommended, right? Because a lot of students are preparing for GRE, GMAT. I'm very clear on that, that, um, that, that we're making sure, right? Um, so if you're doing GRE and internships and also publishing papers, I think that's definitely something that the schools will consider. So hopefully that, that's helpful. Uh, and I know we have about a minute here before uh, we finish this live. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, you know, really the, the intent of the session was to demystify what does it mean to build your profile, right? And we've had some fantastic questions. So thank you so much for that. I would highly encourage everyone out there who is looking to um, go you know, abroad or even for their higher studies, undergraduate, graduate programs, whatever it is, to really make sure that you're absolutely organized, starting the process early, and really making sure that you're building a holistic profile, right? So, so that was the intent of the session and, and super excited to have that. Uh, Aman's question, can you drop your LinkedIn so that I connect with you? Uh, sure, so I'm Archana Rao on LinkedIn and you will find me on LinkedIn as well, happy to connect with anyone. So I'm the VP of corporate strategy for a company called Innova Solutions, but I'm a senior counselor here at Reach IB. So super excited to meet all of you. And I think the other, um, you know, the only other thing that I wanted to tell everyone is thanks for joining and all the best with your profile building and your application journey. Uh, and we're at time, so, I will make sure that we have this video posted to our Instagram feed so that you can take a look at it whenever you would like. All the best and thank you so much for joining um, the live session. Have a good day, everyone.